The weather today is absolutely horrible. It says it's 102 right now. It's hot, and I know that it gets hotter every year. But it's a dry heat, they say, and that's supposed to be a good thing. It's grueling outside. I hate this weather. Sweaty. Arizonans know that the temperature is a force to contend with in the summer. Global climate is changing, and here, in the metropolitan areas of the Southwest, people are feeling the heat. There's really no place in the country that sort of escapes from uh, the projected uh, impacts of climate change. Greg Garfin is a climatologist working at the University of Arizona. He's also one of the lead authors of the 2014 National Climate Assessment. This particular National Climate Assessment is the most comprehensive climate assessment that's ever been developed for the United States. And in the National Climate Assessment for the nation as a whole, we demonstrate that climate change is happening now. It's not just a problem for the future. It's affecting Americans all throughout the country. The National Climate Assessment is divided into regions, each with its own set of characteristics and challenges. The Southwest is no exception. Here, higher temperatures, drought and insect outbreaks, all linked to climate change, have increased wildfires. Declining water supplies have also made it difficult for urban centers to cope with the increasing temperatures. The combination of increasing temperatures along with the way that urban areas amplify heat, uh, the so-called urban heat island effect. Those all lead to increasing risks to public health in terms of extreme heat, and extreme heat is the number one killer, weather-related killer, in the United States, and Arizona is the number one affected state. Hot temperatures mean precautions need to be taken to stay safe, especially as the summer heat sets in for extended periods of time. Nobody is more aware of this than the people who work outdoors during the summer. I've been dehydrated severely before here on the roof. This year I haven't, but uh, there's been years that I've, that I've been severely dehydrated. Freddy Gonzalez has been working with the roofing company since 1997. It's hot, grueling work, and he's noticed temperatures getting hotter every year. One of the co-workers um, brought a thermometer the other day, a small little house thermometer. It jumped from 110 to 120, to so 130, 140, 150, and it topped out at 150. Freddie and his crew say the body does get somewhat acclimated over time, but in this extreme environment, he's seen co-workers get sick and fall victim to heat stroke. People who can't stand the heat, they don't last long. They think they can handle it, but it, you know, every person is different. These people at work outside all the time, they seem to be completely tolerant of very high temperatures for long periods of time, but if you watch them, they, they're very careful about drinking a lot of water. Dr. Ralph Ragosi is professor of physiology in the Department of Neuroscience at the University of Arizona. He says people that work in the summer heat of desert cities like Tucson operate at the edge of human endurance. For every calorie produced, about 75% of the energy is going off as heat. And you have to get rid of that to maintain your internal temperature constant. And the way we get rid of heat is to bring blood to the skin. And then the heat in the blood can actually move into the environment, mostly by evaporation. So in the desert, we're advantaged because the humidity is low. When the humidity is low, evaporative cooling is very effective. While exposure to high temperatures can be extremely dangerous, the body has evolved the ability to adapt over time. Within 7 to 14 days of exposure, it can actually become acclimated to the heat. You start to sweat at a lower temperature, so you bring in the cooling system sooner. And also, the, the amount of sweat produced by your sweat glands increases. So I guess that can be the new Tucson status symbol, is having a low sweat threshold. There is a limit. Heat stroke is common, and if left untreated, the condition can be fatal. There's a terrible competition between the blood flow going to the skin surface, but as a result, you have less blood going back to the heart. Your blood pressure falls, 
And if your blood pressure falls enough, your brain function is compromised and you often lose the ability to thermoregulate at all. So the temperature spikes up to very high levels and it can actually damage brain tissue and that's what can kill you. It's hot out there, and according to the National Climate Assessment, the Southwest is expected to get even hotter, and in its southern half, significantly drier. But there's also the silver lining side of things, and uh, something that I've noticed in my work in the Southwest is that people are waking up. We have really important opportunities to reduce the root causes of climate change, the heat trapping greenhouse gases that we put into the atmosphere, as well as trying to reduce the expected risks of climate change through preparedness and planning. <laughs>